We gave us a bit of a fright, but uh, we tell stories, and um, we're hoping that uh, we can tell the story uh, of qualifying uh, day three, the men's singles draw at Wimbledon 2023. Don't go away. We'll be right back. G'day and welcome to this Australian Open Life. Uh, you're listening to The Bloke Who Walks and uh, we are crossing our fingers like mad. <laughs> Today we're crossing everything because yesterday uh, looking at uh, qualifying for uh, day two at Wimbledon in the afternoon, uh, the technology side of things, the tech side of things just got the better of us that uh, the microphone went blank. We were... <laughs> We were talking to ourselves for a good, a good uh, 60 to 70 minutes, which was, uh, well, it's a lot of fun, but uh, often uh, not the way we want to go. Now, running in the background, this is uh, what we're trying to do with these live streams, uh, with these live streams, and uh, Stadium Court, Court 11, let's have a listen to what's going on there. We've seen him around the tour for years and years and years. Plays the Brazilian who beat Medvedev in the opening round at Roland Garros less than a month ago. Then you've got two women singles, Clara Torsen, the third seed from Denmark, against Rebecca Sramkova of uh, Slovakia. And then Diana Schneider plays Great Britain's Anna Brogan to complete things here on our new stadium court, which is number 11 here. Now it's a grey old morning in London town. I can tell you there's a, a hint of rain in the air. What happened to the heat wave from, from Queens last week? And talking of Queens last week, obviously won by Carlos Alcaraz in the last few moments. And uh, we'll just uh, drop that into the background. Now, one thing I didn't realise uh, as I was preparing uh, for this uh, episode, this broadcast presentation by uh, Wise Words Media, we're a boutique production house based in Melbourne, Australia. And this Australian Open Life um, is uh, is uh, one of our, uh, our key brands, the This Life series. Uh, we also produce content about international student education, the commercial property sector in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we have a web series going uh, under the name of Project Waterman, uh, which has uh, featured at festivals around the world in the last two years, 18 months. And uh, we've also got a, um, <laughs> we also practice, uh, we've got some uh, podcast uh, material in post-production, uh, which is in the creative arts, so we've got a lot going on. But uh, what I didn't notice while I was preparing for today, for day three, Wimbledon qualifying, uh, which is we're going to focus on the second round of the men's, the gentlemen's, beg your pardon, the gentlemen's, uh, uh, gentlemen's uh, side of the draw at Wimbledon. Uh, we've picked out a great game for you between uh, uh, the French player and also a Brazilian player. We'll be getting into uh, those guys and uh, what they're bringing to the table today. We're going to commentate in full one full set of their match 
uh, which was played. Uh, I now um, it was played uh, last Wednesday, uh, the 27th of June, I believe that was. We'll just bring up the calendar. Yeah, no, it was the 28th of June. Come on, uh, get your act together. So, um, but I did notice uh, while we were just listening to that commentary, which is going on in the background, and it's behind our thumbnail. We don't have broadcast rights for any footage from Wimbledon, but um, after researching, investigating, uh, tapping into the the knowledge and expertise of a lot of um, uh, professional uh, sports content producers around the world, uh, particularly we've been following uh, those that produce content about uh, Celtic Football Club the last couple of years. Um, of course, we like uh, tapping into the, the knowledge base of uh, Brett Phillips at uh, the First Serve, who broadcasts on SEN, the only mainstream tennis broadcaster who follows uh, tennis the full year around. So we're not afraid to plug him because he's been very helpful to us over the last uh, two or three years. And, uh, and now that uh, Ange Postecoglou has dropped into uh, Tottenham Hops, parachuted in, not dropped in, he's parachuted into the big job at Tottenham Hotspur uh, starting yesterday, the 1st of July. Uh, we've picked up a few tips uh, on sports broadcasting um, and we think we, uh, we want to keep innovating. We want to keep uh, developing and growing, growing our audience. And the best way to do that is to present uh, information uh, with regards to um, uh, our, the, our preferred niche topics. Um, and uh, the only way we can do that is to buy uh, experimenting. Um, so we really appreciate you dropping in. We'd love to have your feedback because um, uh, that uh, it's the only way we can develop basically is to um, see, see how we can um, present content that's uh, valuable to yourselves the listeners, um, and uh, and let's get on to the tennis. So uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm just going to line up the commentary. So excuse me, uh, we're going to um, uh, uh, drop out of um, the commentary for um, uh, these guys, and I'm going to um, just uh, break up the uh, the uh, the view for, for the listeners at the moment because uh, we want to make sure that uh, the footage... Uh, is um, something that's uh, dynamic, um, that's interesting uh, for all of you. So uh, uh, as a um, uh, as a as a priority, uh, I want to uh, make sure that there's always something interesting here for for uh, the listeners and uh, and those that uh, are interested in a bit more of a visual dynamic. Um, so we're going to go uh, have this running in the background. Um, and these are uh, it's it's footage and content that um, Wise Words Media has uh, produced in the past, and uh, that uh, we own the rights to this footage, and so we'll have this playing in the background um, for a point of difference uh, rather than just a thumbnail, um, uh, which hopefully this will be a lot more visually uh, dynamic and interesting for you. And please let us know in the comments. Please let us know uh, with some feedback would be most helpful. Um, as we uh, grow and develop the content for this channel. So uh, while this is playing, uh, I'm going to uh, just line up the, um, uh, the uh, broadcast commentary for us for this match. And as soon as I've done that, um, we will uh, get into... I'll be introducing the players to you from France and um, uh, Brazil. Uh, these guys playing their second round qualifying match um, uh, at uh, stadium, uh, the stadium court um, uh, on court, which is court 11 uh, at Wimbledon. Um, so I'm just about. We're going to. I'm just lining this up now, um, so that these these guys will be uh, tuning into their second set. And uh, I've got the commentary lined up where uh, the Brazilian Seaboth Wild, who is uh, his Christian name being Thiago, uh, he is playing the Frenchman uh, Pierre. Uh, it'll come up now. <laughs> Can't believe these browsers. Uh, Pierre, Pierre Hugh Herbert. Um, so excuse my pronunciation, my poor French pronunciation uh, of these names and also Brazil. But uh, these guys um, are just, um, the replay just winding down. And that's uh, the Brazilian has won the first set. So uh, we're going to join that later on. I've got that all lined up for you. Um, so let's uh, take a short break, a short, sharp break. Um, and uh, don't go away. We'll be right back with an introduction of uh, round two of the men's qualifying draw uh, for Wimbledon between uh, the French player and the Brazilian. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
G'day and welcome back to this Australian Open Life. Uh, we tell stories and our story is tennis and it is Grand Slam week uh, for the next two weeks actually at Wimbledon SW19 as uh, the Poms uh, at the moment it is 2am uh, Sunday the uh, the 2nd of July. It's, a, it's dropped the temperature 14 degrees but the humidity has gone up. Um, increased again uh, to 79%. So the Poms, um, uh, their Sunday will be uh, reasonably uh, a little bit cloudy, 22 degrees. And uh, Wimbledon next week, uh, they've been having a heat wave, the Poms, uh, throughout the last uh, cu uh, month at least. And uh, you heard the commentary team there before mentioning that Queen, the Queen's tournament uh, was a bit of a heat wave. Um, so uh, with humidity, at uh, that's pretty high. 79% they'll uh, there'll be no uh, dunas uh, on anyone's beds in London at the moment so uh, anyway uh, if they can get to sleep uh, they've also got to try and um, when they get to sleep not have any nightmares about the second ashes test at Lords that uh, their, their elite cricketers are busy throwing away at the moment so um, uh, let's get on to uh, the tennis forget about the cricket all the action is at Wimbledon this week and uh, I've brought up for you uh, uh, the profile for uh, Pierre uh, Hubert uh, Herbert. Um, he is a, uh, a French player, uh, and we'll just briefly go through his uh, stats. Uh, the Frenchman, um, he is uh, uh, drawn against the Brazilian, so uh, Herbert, uh, currently ranked 494 in the world. Uh, been around for a while by the looks of it, um, 32 years of age. And uh, six foot two, as most of these guys uh, on the men's draw um, uh, going around the uh, ATP tour are these days. So let's take a look at what he's been doing uh, during uh, 2023. And uh, we can see um, what we're interested in is uh, how he's fared during uh, 2023 only in the lead up to, um, uh, to Wimbledon. I'm just going to double check the, uh, the audios uh, behaving uh, this morning. Uh, so if you just excuse me, yes, it all looks to be there. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I can see some, <laughs> I can see some things moving. Um, so we must be good. But please let me know in the chat uh, if you're tuning in. Please let me know uh, that uh, all the audio is good on your side, um, because uh, without your help, uh, um, uh, these broadcasts, these episodes uh, <laughs> won't be up to scratch. And yesterday that was the case. Um, so uh, just looking at some of the um, uh, the leading tournaments that uh, this Frenchman, uh, how he's been going this year, I can see that uh, the the previous two tournaments he did all right um, for 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 a journeyman. He uh, played in the Netherlands. Uh, you can see he got to the second round of qualifying. Uh, now the reason uh, we like following. Uh, the journey of uh, players who have to go through the qualifying rounds is because there's a lot of players on the professional circuit that never ever get any attention. Um, there's a lot of stories out there about a lot of players who really, um, really do the hard yards. And we want to give them, because you can see the prize money uh, this guy has accumulated uh, so far this year. It's uh, That is 32,000 uh, in, uh, I believe it's Australian dollars. Um, that uh, most of these websites revert to uh, the currency of the um, um, the current the, the currency of where the user is located, where the browser is actually um, uh, presenting this information. So I'm going to assume that's 32,000. That's all this guy has earned this year so far uh, from tennis. He might have a couple of sponsorship deals. Uh, maybe his clothes might be supplied for free. His rackets supplied for free, uh, but. Um, you can see he got to the second round of qualifying in uh, that tournament in the Netherlands in uh, the middle of June. And he also played at Surbiton. Um, we've already seen uh, quite a few um, uh, ladies on uh, the Wim in the Wimbledon qualifying draw. They've also been to Surbiton. He got as far as the second round of qualifying. And he lost against somebody much, much lower than himself, about 100 places lower. Um, and lost uh, that in the second set fairly closely, 6-7. Um, and uh, at Roland Garris, uh, his home Grand Slam tournament, he didn't even score a wild card. That's a, <laughs> that's a bit rough uh, that he had to go through the qualifying, and he lost 
Uh, he lost there to somebody uh, ranked 62 who may be coming back from injury. Now, have a look at this. His opponent, uh, what a close match, 6-7, six, 6-7. Seven, six, seven. Now, that had... <laughs> That didn't make you cry into your beer that night after after a hard day on the court to lose your home Grand Slam uh, first round qualifying match so close and uh, and this is the reason we like looking at these guys and girls is because um, the the margins are so fine and uh, and a person who knows uh, all about those fine margins is uh, the Australian player Tanasi Kokonakis and that guy just can't take a trick here to go through qualifying uh, he lost his first uh, first round qualifying match at Wimbledon. Uh, on the first day, the, he was seeded number two uh, as a qualifying player through the rounds, and he lost. Uh, you would not read about it. He lost in straight sets, came up against somebody who he should be uh, getting through um, quite comfortably, getting past, and uh, his opponent uh, stepped up <laughs> and sent him packing. So no no Wimbledon main draw this year for Tanasi. And just uh, finishing off, um, in the lead up to uh, before uh, Roland Garros, uh, this bloke had some really, really nice results. Have a look at this. No wonder he went into uh, Roland Garros with uh, some confidence, even if he wasn't qualifying. He uh, went so far as the semi final in uh, that uh, French tournament there on clay and uh, lost in uh, three sets and uh, um, play, got up against Liam Brody there. You can see the British player at Lugano in Switzerland. And we'll stop here um, uh, with this French tournament where he went out in the round of 22 against the uh, 118 player in the world at the time. Uh, the Swiss player Dominic Stricker lost in straight sets. So that's, um, that's the French player. Uh, let's take a look at his opponent for today. Uh, he's a Brazilian. And the reason I chose this match was um, that we're uh, doing doing the men today and uh, taking a look uh, to, uh, with uh, the final uh, day of qualifying, day four. Uh, we'll go back to um, showcasing the ladies um, and seeing how they go. But I did notice just a brief. Actually, I'll leave it for I'll leave it for later for the next next uh, stream because I did notice. A, um, uh, 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 in the ladies' draw for day two on uh, on the stadium court, court 11. I did notice um, a familiar name, so we'll talk about her later. There's um, there's no need to go into that now. So uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the Brazilian. Um, if my <laughs> the software just making me work that little bit extra harder, and here he is, Tiago Saboth Wild. And if I've mispronounced his name, apologies to any Brazilian listeners or South American. Um, it's mispronounced with the best of intentions. Um, so this bloke ranked 131 in the world. He's just outside the top 100. So to all intents and purposes, you could say that this bloke, uh, being 23, he's uh, making his way on the ATP uh, professional tour. Uh, also a very tall, well-built bloke and right-handed Two-hander, backhand, no surprise there for a clay court uh, player from uh, Brazil. And uh, let's go down, uh, let's go just see uh, how this guy's been um, performing uh, this year uh, in the lead up to um, uh, in the lead up to Wimbledon. Now you wouldn't ex you wouldn't be surprised a Brazilian clay court player uh, would be uh, qual um, in qualifying for uh, the grass court season. Um, but he's had a much more successful time of it. Now, I'm not, I'm not too sure if you can see on your screen uh, my um, my mouse as it rolls across the screen. But you can see this bloke um, has done quite a good job so far in 2023 if we're only focusing on money. And uh, I've got to um, uh, just give a bit of a quick critique of the, I, uh, the ATP Tour website. Um, if you're going to list uh, prize money, why not list? Um, uh, why not have a, um, a dynamic, um, uh, interactive um, presentation of how many points this guy has racked up immediately uh, um, under the prize money? Um, because it's not all about money. Actually, these guys are playing for points, which um, if they accumulate them and uh, they aggregate in the right direction, they're going to be getting into the main draw of each tournament. They're not going to have to go through qualifying. So. Uh, this bloke has uh, um, accumulated in 2023 uh, nearly uh, just over $193,000 uh, um, uh, in prize money. And I'm just double checking the chat to see if anyone's there. No, I'm talking to myself. That's all right, because uh, we hope that um, if you can't make the live streams 
these presentations uh, as we're doing them. Uh, the, the content will be there for you later on. Uh, no matter wherever you are in the world, you can uh, pick up uh, our content at whatever um, time it suits you, whatever time of the day or whatever. But please, um, please don't drop us if you've um, found us uh, for the first time. And if uh, you're re a returning viewer, make sure you drop us a like and please uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so because we're trying to grow our audience. Uh, so going back to our uh, Brazilian, uh, Tiago. He, uh, sorry, I was just <laughs> gulping down some tea uh, to keep me going. So the most, uh, he hasn't played any lead-up tournaments uh, for Wimbledon. He's uh, skipped all the grass court um, uh, tournaments uh, throughout uh, England that we've seen another, a few other players uh, are taking part in. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's no drama. It could be that uh, he decided that, uh, look, he got to round of 32. Uh, he had a great, a great run through uh, Roland Garros. So let's, let's see uh, if we can recognize any names there. And he defeated, have a look at this, in a round... The round of 128. So that's um, that is uh, yeah. He got so he got through his three matches of qualifying. He had to qualify uh, for uh, the main draw at uh, Roland Garros, and he's got through. He only dropped one set in his qualifying matches, the three qualifying rounds, and he got through extremely comfortably. So uh, he got into the main draw absolutely flying. Once he beat. Uh, the German Dominic Kepfer, who was 103 uh, in the world at the time, 6-1, 6-1, that's a fair old result. And so he went in with a lot of confidence and have a look at this. He, he drew the number two seed, Daniel Med Medvedev, and he's played a five-setter, 7-6, 6-7, 2-6, 6-3, 6-4. -6 and he's, uh, he's he, so uh, have a look at the, um, the results that he's pulled out. Two tie breaks in a row he's played. He's won one and he's lost one. And then he's uh, gone through Daniel Medvedev and swept him up and said, no worries, mate, I'm, t <laughs> I'm taking this first round match. And so he's gone up against an Argentinian. Uh, that would have been a bit of a grudge match. <laughs> I'm tipping a bit of a grudge match, a bit of a derby between Argentina and Brazil. And he's got out on top there uh, in four sets. Uh, so he's dropped two sets on his uh, way through to the third round at Roland Garros until he came up against... Uh, uh, Yoshihito Nishioka and the Japanese player uh, uh, who was seeded 33 and the Brazilian obviously uh, uh, not ranked as, a, as a, um, a qualifying player through the qualifying rounds and it looks like uh, playing that, that five setter against the Japanese um, by that stage his legs might have been starting to give out that uh, he just couldn't get over the line um, he lost 6-3, 6-7, 6-2, 4-6 very valiant effort in the fourth set, and then he ran out of legs, losing uh, love six in the fifth. So this bloke's um, got a fair bit of uh, momentum behind him. Uh, had a great run in, uh, so he might have taken off the grass court lead-up tournaments, obviously to rest. And uh, you know, with uh, grass, he's probably uh, just having a roll of the dice to see uh, he's going to try his luck. And uh, I'm just going to stop here just to make sure the audio is running. And again, if uh, you can help me out with um, Letting me know if you're tuning in, uh, listening along. Um, if you can let me know in the chat if uh, the audio drops out at any stage so I don't have to uh, uh, click around too many screens at the studio side of things on my side. And uh, we'll just go back um, two or three tournaments to see how this guy, uh, his form going into Roland Garros. Because obviously um, he felt he needed a rest for the grass court season. Maybe doesn't feel... Um, that uh, it's worth putting in too much effort uh, to keep himself fresh for the hard court season throughout the US, uh, leading up to the US Open in, um, in about six to seven weeks' time. Uh, so just briefly, uh, he had a good run in um, uh, uh, Turin um, and got to the quarterfinals, losing to the uh, <laughs> losing to an Argentinian this time. Uh, the the uh, Sebastian Baez um, beat him in three sets. So this guy uh, tends to come out. Um, he gets through these longer matches, um, generally coming out on top by the looks of it. And I see that he's beaten Taro Daniel, the Japanese player. Now, that's a, that's a pretty good scalp to get uh, uh, in three sets um, at Turin. And if we go back to uh, uh, two tournaments in South America, and we'll finish up here, that um, uh, the, the, uh, the tournament in Chile... 
Um, he played. Um, he's played three Brazilians there in the lead up, and uh, he's in the main draw. And uh, it was all straight sets. Um, so this guy, um, uh, this guy uh, knows his way around a clay court. Uh, winning in straight sets there. There's a couple of... He's hardly dropped a game. And then he came up... Oh, boy, he'd be disappointed with this. In the semi-final, he played a player ranked nearly in the 300s. Um, the Brazilian, um, his countryman, Almeida. Um, and he's lost 6-7. Uh, oh, that's tough. <laughs> that is tough. He's just lost a first set tiebreaker. And uh, obviously, his opponent uh, stepped up and said, Well, I'm, I'm going uh, <laughs> to... I'm gonna I'm gonna um, play this game out of my skin, and he got through. Uh, lost in uh, Tiago lost in two tight sets, and we'll just finish off with this tournament in uh, Buenos Aires. And again, we can see that he's uh, got through all the way. Um, so this is a nice nice note to finish on because we can see Tiago, the gr uh, the clay court specialist, had a couple of uh, tough early rounds, three setters, um, came out on top in straight set straight sets victories when it counts against Argentinians. He'll be, he'll be thrilled about that. Uh, got over uh, Erman Casanova um, in straight sets, 6-3, 6-2. Got over another Argentinian. Both of these guys ranked in the mid-200s. The quarterfinal, the semifinal, uh, Tiago got over um, in the semifinal. Mariano Navone, 6-2, uh, 6-3. And have a look at this. He's picked up the title against the Italian, ranked 190 in the world in straight sets. Luciano Darderi uh, couldn't really put up much of a fight. Uh, Tiago winning uh, their 6-3, 6-3. So uh, let's take a break. Uh, just to give you guys, uh, if you're tuning in, whether it's today or uh, later on, give you a break from uh, my uh, creaky old voice. I've been talking nearly non-stop since uh, 7 o'clock yesterday morning. We've got a lot of content to get through, and uh, we want to make sure it's uh, the best possible quality. So uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. G'day and welcome back to this Australian Open Life. We tell stories and our story today for this uh, particular live stream is uh, the uh, the gentleman's qualifying singles draw. And uh, if you'll just bear with me uh, while we line up the commentary, I know exactly, <laughs> know exactly the timestamp that I'm looking for. And uh, we'll kick in and let uh, the broadcast uh, commentary uh, take over. Now, just a reminder, the reason why you're staring at a thumbnail is uh, that uh, Wise Words Media, we're a small boutique production house. We don't have any broadcast rights to be able to show you footage. So what, what we want to specialise in is always innovating, always uh, growing uh, the style and uh, the format. The, uh, the, we want to be adaptive uh, for our audience and uh, we want to try and uh, bring a new type of uh, uh, content to you. So we're experimenting with a different uh, style of format. Um, and uh, I'm going to bring on the, uh, the audio in the background as uh, we're going to watch uh, we're going to watch. Uh, we're going <laughs> to. We're going to bring you audio from the match between uh, uh, the Frenchman uh, Herbert and the Brazilian, uh, who is serving for the first set. Uh, he's got two set points. He's uh, uh, trying to break the serve. Thiago Saboth Wild. He's down. He's up 40-15. Uh, the Frenchman is down 15-40, and uh, he's uh, got to save two first set points. And he's just uh, his first serve is just just gone into the net 
Now you can't see what I'm describing and uh, I am going to let this run in the background as these guys play. And the idea is that I'm hoping, which I failed yesterday, but my, the idea is, there it is, uh, the Brazilian taking the first set um, with a, a really good forehand past the, uh, uh, the Frenchman uh, who was stranded on the baseline in the middle of the court, and he's taken the first set 7-5. So uh, the idea is, what I'm trying to achieve here is that uh, I want the, um, the audio commentary to run for each uh, match I'm presenting, we're going to uh, stay with one match, uh, one set of each match, uh, so that uh, we can just break up um, and bring a different style of uh, content for you. Now, the the live the broadcast uh, that I'm plugging into, uh, they're currently uh, while these while these uh, players, uh, uh, the Frenchman and the Brazilian, uh, they're sitting down at the break uh, at the end of the first set, and the broadcast commentary is just going. Uh, they've just gone to some interviews, some live interviews uh, for that particular day, Wednesday, uh, the 28th of June last week, 2023. And uh, and then we'll come back. When they come back to the main commentary as the players come back to the court, uh, you're going to hear a mix of uh, the broadcast commentary, the audio only. Um, and uh, you're going to uh, keep seeing the thumbnail. But uh, um, for the moment... Uh, we're going to stick with a mix of my commentary, my input, um, and a mix of uh, uh, behind the scenes, and also coming, um, uh, uh, being prominent, the uh, the broadcast uh, coverage, their commentary, and uh, it's a radio style commentary, audio only, and uh, really appreciate some feedback. Um, uh, if you could let me know uh, how you think it's going. Now they're just running through a few different uh, uh, sound bites. Uh, interviews with different players and I want to let you know that uh, later later today possibly early tomorrow morning uh, we're going to be um, bringing you a presentation to preview player interviews uh, we've had some requests and there's uh, Matteo uh, uh, Mattia Bellucci um, an Italian player who's uh, won through his uh, second round match uh, not familiar with this guy. I'm more familiar with uh, his countryman, Matteo Berentini, I think his name is, um, a successful uh, ATP tour player. But we're going to be uh, trying to present a lot of audio of uh, player interviews uh, from uh, Wind Wimbledon, and we'll be starting off with uh, the uh, interviews from qualifying players as they uh, complete their matches. Uh, we've had a lot of requests um, over the last 18 months, two years that we've been going for player interviews. Um, so we hope that we can um, uh, meet that request and uh, bring you something different. So we've been running about half an hour by now and uh, we're going to stick with the first set of the match between these two guys. Um, and I can see the British player uh, Broom, uh, his opponent Novak, and uh, the British player is serving, is trying to stay in the match now. Nah, He's uh, lost that, uh, he was receiving, and uh, his opponent Novak, um, Dennis Novak from Austria, has beaten in straight sets 6-3, 6-4, Charles Broom of Great Britain, uh, going down after his first round victory, so that's a shame for him because he, he went through his first round match um, in pretty good form, actually, and I think, did we, did we uh, cover, his, cover his match? I can't remember. Um, so uh, we're just waiting for the broadcast coverage to go back to the main match uh, between the Brazilian and the Frenchman. Uh, the Brazilian winning the first set. Um, I think it was... Uh, oh, well, I'm not going to try and remember it. I'll tell you what the score is um, when they come back. So uh, we're just uh, waiting on the broadcast coverage. Let me know if you can hear them from behind. Uh, you, you're listening to Dennis Novak at the moment. Last push. One more game. You feel for tomorrow. So, yeah, but still, I, I just keep focusing on every point and uh, it worked out really good. One more step to go. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, everybody's trying to find a vantage point down here on court 14 because the player at this end of the court is Mira Andreeva, made of Turkey. Yes. Uh, so, obviously, a bit of rivalry. But, but, you know, and that's gone. That's going five all film crews. Wherever she goes, she is the next big thing, so they say. And it's going according to plan for Andreeva at the moment in her second round match against Chloe Paquet of France. Six. And this is why we like tapping into uh, the qualifying rounds at the Australian Open. And now that we've got uh, the ability to tap into uh, full coverage 
uh, to, to get a sighter of these up-and-coming players. Uh, you heard them talking about Andriva. Uh, she's a Russian player. She's uh, currently uh, uh, receiving. Uh, she's going to try and um, uh, break the serve of uh, Pak Okay. Uh, in fact, this is this is for uh, the first game of the second set. She's leading. Uh, she's up 40-15. Uh, uh, Parquet uh, drops a nice backhand to the line. Oh, she's completely turned her around. Had uh, Andreva running the wrong direction, and but uh, Andreva still has a second break point as uh, as uh, Andreva is now um, up 30-40. Uh, and the, the broadcast commentary is staying with this match, which is most annoying. So I'm just going to try and skip forward uh, to get to the second set of these guys. Um, and wouldn't you know it, they've uh, missed the first two games. <laughs> oh dear. That's the Brazilian. That's the Brazilian. The Brazilian has the Brazilian has uh, turned back the clock of time to the 1980s. 1984 was the first time we ever saw this type of shot, leaping through the air to his forehand side and catching the ball, a racket head above the turf. Diving like Boris Becker and winning, hitting cross court, his volley across court, and uh, the French opponent um, applauding there. <laughs> Boris Becker, when he won Wimbledon at 17, uh, he was getting a lot of applause, but not from his opponents because they couldn't believe that this 17-year-old kid was uh, was playing out of his skin. Now, um, so uh, just to bring you up to speed, that uh, uh, the Brazilian is leading one set to love. Uh, serving uh, in the third game of the second set, he's uh, um, uh, he is up 40 love, and the Frenchman <laughs> he's trying to trying to uh, save some time and get his breath back, uh, tying up his shoelaces before the first serve of the next point, and that has hit the net, and uh, that is the second serve now coming up for the Brazilian. I've not I don't know anything about this guy. And that's what I love about qualifiers is uh, we're seeing some of these guys for the first time ever. And he's gone on the second serve. An ace. An ace to the backhand on the backhand court. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is some. That is some serve. Now leading 2-1. That's unbelievable. So no fire between these two. In fact, a great deal of respect there from Herbert as... You don't often see, uh, you don't often see at this level, you don't often see um, uh, on the men's tour, you don't often see somebody going for an ace on the second serve, unless your name's box office Nick Kyrgios. He likes to do things in it with a bit of style, does say the field. His junior career would lead everyone to believe that he was going to float into the pros and make a massive impact it doesn't always happen us open junior boys uh, title winner in 2018 he beat lorenzo mazzetti who's now what he was at queens anyway he was so we just got a change of ends at the moment yeah, mazzetti's a star player you know and he's uh, playing in the quality he's outside the top 100 there's almost like a rededication for this 23 year old so uh tiago say both field the brazilian back out on court to receive from the Frenchman, and uh, the Frenchman is going to serve to try and uh, just uh, level things up. He's currently down a set, the Frenchman, and it's, uh, he's down one one game to two, and he's serving in the fourth game of the second set. Nice leap into that volley. So what we'll be aiming for is to uh, follow this uh, second set in its entirety. If uh, the Frenchman wins the second set, uh, we'll be uh, concluding coverage of this game, uh, which was played last Wednesday. Uh, we'll conclude that game, uh, conclude coverage. Uh, we won't follow it through to the third game if there is one. And what we'll do is uh, finish up the coverage of this game. Um, uh, and we'll uh, then go on to uh, let you know who won and uh, what the key stats were. And then we'll take a break and look through the rest of uh, day three qualifying for the men's draw. 
and uh, we'll see uh, how the results panned out on the men's side. See if we can spot any notable uh, wins or absences or uh, uh, Australians. Obviously, we like to follow and we'll see uh, how they did. Unfortunately, uh, Tanasi Kokonakis has already bowed out of Wimbledon, losing his first round match as the number two seed in the qualifying draw, which uh, he will be, <laughs> say, he'll still be kicking himself. So the Frenchman uh, running up to the net, approaching the net with great confidence and putting away a volley, um, and he's now up 40 love and serving for this uh, particular game. And that's long. 40, 50. And uh, that's long, an unforced error on the forehand from the back of the court by the Frenchman. Arsenal. Saka, fair enough, lad. It's on the right track. And uh, there's some, um, well, a fairly at, yeah. decent crowd again, as this uh, stadium court tends to draw a pretty good crowd. The Frenchman uh, serving again, and uh, that's gone out wide to uh, the Brazilian, and uh, the, Bra the Brazilian wasn't able to wrap his racket around the forehand side of his forehand court, and uh, that went out long, uh, uh, very wide on the return, and uh, the Brazilian now uh, gearing up to serve, and uh, you can hear in the crowd. You can hear in the crowd, There's a uh, sounds like there's a fair fr few Brazilians in the crowd um, supporting this guy. Um, Thiago Sagos Vilda uh, won the first set 7-5 against the Frenchman and now he's uh, serving uh, for the, uh, the fifth game of the second set. So desperate as well. And he's lost that point. To the Iguazu Falls and... So again, uh, just to remind you that uh, this is an audio-only radio-style coverage of qualifying at Wimbledon Day 3. The men's, uh, the gentlemen's uh, singles are qualifying. We're now into the second round. We're, we're looking at uh, uh, the second set. We're going to cover this second set between uh, Pierre Herbert and uh, Thiago Sebas Vilda uh, from Brazil. Uh, the Frenchman uh, getting back a very nice serve there by the Brazilian. Uh, well done, Pierre, and uh, he actually gave the uh, the Brazilian some trouble there. That um, the Brazilian um, uh, wasn't able to uh, get to the ball drop um, at the back of the court, and uh, his uh, uh, his own shot went well long. So the Frenchman is now up two points, uh, 30 love. But oh, look at that ace! <laughs> Have a look at the ace. That uh, that ace by the Brazilian is. Uh, <laughs> look at this. That's that is some that is some serve to the backhand of the Frenchman down the tee. And that's another great serve by the Brazilian. And uh, I was just about to say that the Frenchman. I was just about to say that the Frenchman was uh, getting back into this. Uh, getting into the uh, the service game of the Brazilian. Not the case. Yeah, oh, that is good tennis. Good tennis there by the Brazilian. That he uh, he's um, he's won back, uh, made up those two lost points on his serve with uh, three extremely good serves of his own, and now serving at uh, 40-30. Yeah, good stuff. And he's gone with another ace. He's gone with another ace. He's, he's now leading, uh, the Brazilian now leading 3-2, and he has uh, closed out that, um, he's, he's closed out that service game with a second ace for that game, and uh, I tell you what, he's got a he's got a pretty nice serve on him, this guy, I've never seen him play, and uh, that's the whole reason why we like uh, bringing these quali you know, content about qualifying uh, to you, and uh, even though uh, our focus is um, the Australian Open, uh, and uh, look, uh, we're going to admit to a bit of bias. Uh, we like the Australians. We like uh, seeing them progress. But uh, tennis is a world game, and uh, one of the things we love about the tennis is that uh, we get people from all the, all around the world coming to Melbourne to compete for uh, the title of the Australian Open, and we also enjoy learning about them and their game and uh, seeing what they can do as they uh, apply their trade. 
and this Brazilian. Um, uh, so this is a bit of an education for us, and hopefully for you as well. That's the French support behind him now. Yeah, well, no surprise that uh, there's a few, um, <laughs> there's a few, a, a few uh, uh, French, uh, uh, French compatriots there, uh, paying customers, uh, getting across to Wimbledon to watch this match and support this guy, uh, who is currently uh, t down two games to three in the second set. Uh, the Frenchman he lost the first set, uh, seven five, um, so it was reasonably close. 32 this bloke and the Brazilian only 23 that's a nice serve well well played well played to uh, the Frenchman he's uh, sent that serve out pretty wide to uh, the forehand of the Brazilian and uh, and the Brazilian um, just um, wasn't able to control the shot to the point where it uh, floated up to the middle of the court and it was a uh, overhead shot uh, for the Frenchman and he's followed that up uh, that winner from the overhead shot, he's followed it up with a very good serve uh, down the tee, and he's now up uh, 30 love on this uh, service game. So a pretty even game so far for these chaps. Very good match to be uh, tuning into, actually. Yeah, good serve. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, the Frenchman has uh, soaked up all the uh, all the firepower of the Brazilian in the previous service game of the Brazilian, and uh, and now he's decided to uh, just tell the, let the Brazilian know that he's equally up to the task on serve, and serving at 40 love. We've got a bit of a rally, but it didn't go too long, and uh, the Frenchman has uh, cleaned cleaned up. To come back to three all, it's now three all in the second set. We've picked a very good set here to be following. That uh, the Frenchman went through 40 love, <laughs> did not drop a point, and uh, a couple of nice serves. Um, one ace uh, from memory, but uh, he certainly had the Brazilian scrambling, who's now serving um, uh, in the seventh game of the second set, and his first serve goes into the net. Um, it was headed for the forehand side of uh, Herbert, the Frenchman. <coughs> and that's a let. Uh, you might have heard the, uh, the squeak there from um, the technology. And uh, it's come to my attention that uh, there's going to be some commentary by artificial intelligence at Wimbledon this year. I'm not a fan of AI in any shape or form. And he's, uh, that's a second let. And he's on his second service, the Brazilian, at what the moment. The net rule. Top of the net, serve. I don't really feel that strongly about it. I think we can either, either keep it or ditch it. A pretty long rally here. Ooh. And, oh, 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 oh boy. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the Frenchman... Uh, the Frenchman, the Frenchman has uh, sent a return off his forehand, approaching the net, and the Brazilian has uh, has allowed the ball to bounce. Uh, he just, well, I wouldn't say that he misjudged the flight of the ball, but he decided pretty early on the uh, Brazilian that the ball was going to go out, and then guess what? It didn't, and it's uh, landed on the line at his feet. And you should have seen, <laughs> yeah, should have seen the look in his face as he uh, realised that the Frenchman had uh, <laughs> had done a number on him and won that point with a well placed return. Yes. I can't see a match finishing on a massive net call with a ball bouncing up and somebody coming in and just clubbing a forehand. That wouldn't feel right. And so uh, the Brazilian um, hitting the net uh, with his first serve uh, and and repeated serves. He's hit the he's had a let cord and also uh, it's gone out uh, about five times this service game already at 15 all, and that has uh, down to the yeah good serve. The second serve down the line to the backhand of the Frenchman, and uh, so with all these let cords. Uh, you'll hear these commentators have been um, talking about some some uh, changes to the net cord uh, rule, which I'm not quite up to speed with, so I might have to look into that. 
Best of nine. Yeah, good serve. Yeah, short, short. So although this game, it seems and it feels like the Brazilian is struggling on serve, he's leading 40-15 and he's getting the job done. He's got a wicked serve, this guy. Nice work. After the... Nice work by the Brazilian that he's uh, sent that first serve uh, to win the seventh game of the second set. He leads 4-3. He sent that um, he sent that out wide to the Frenchman's forehand, and he's done that a couple of times while I've been watching. And these guys are now talking about the Ashes Test at Lords. Uh, we won't be talking about the cricket today uh, unless it's uh, a very brief mention. But um, so the Frenchman, uh, I wouldn't say he's in trouble, but uh, I'd say that he he'll be wanting to make sure that he wins his next service game because uh, he if he if he doesn't win his if he gets broken as he. Uh, Chows down on a banana at the uh, the change of ends. Uh, the Frenchman wouldn't want to be uh, having his serve broken uh, in the next uh, service game because then he'll be down uh, five two, and uh, and then it could be all over because we know that we've, uh, from what I've seen of this Brazilian uh, so far, he has got a uh, I haven't seen his serve in too much trouble. The Frenchman hasn't been putting his serve under too much pressure. The only pressure coming to the uh, serve of the Brazilian is under his own uh, efforts uh, if he's um, uh, making his own unforced errors. And there's just a shot there of his uh, coach uh, decked out in blue and a white cap and he's looking over to his coach. Now, um, did you know that uh, this year at Wimbledon, players are allowed to talk to their coaches during tournament play? And the Frenchman is now serving at 4-3, and his first serve goes into the net. Pretty overcast on day three in this second round match, uh, and uh, probably fairly humid. Nobody's rugged up against the cold, and that second serve uh, goes to uh, the... Uh, goes to, Was that the backhand or the <laughs> forehand? I've got to concentrate more. Anyway, the end result is that the Frenchman wins the first point. He's up 15, love. He's down 3-4 in the second set and lost the first set. One uh, by seven games to five. Another good serve by the Frenchman. Uh, he went down the, uh, the middle of the tee uh, in the four, in the backhand court to the uh, Brazilian and he uh, uh, put that into the net. He just wants charge of this match. He feels like the better player. That's very much what we're seeing. And so I'd have to agree there with uh, the commentator. Good rally. And uh, nice work. Nice work by the Frenchman. He was, uh, the Frenchman was scrambling. And uh, in, in the manner that he got the ball back on this serve, uh, he put a, a backhand to the, uh, from his backhand side to the backhand of the Brazilian. The Brazilian popped the ball up to the middle of the tee in the centre of the court, uh, forcing the Frenchman back and he managed to scramble a lob uh, from behind his head and put it back into play. The Brazilian uh, was left uh, in all sorts and couldn't win the point. So the Frenchman now serving at 40 love. He's got a decent serve and uh, he's gone 40 love again. That's a repeat of his previous service game. Uh, he wasn't nervous at all. He has uh, gone through 40 love to win the uh, uh, the eighth game of the second set. Uh, he's taking some advice from his coach there. Uh, they're having a good old chat as he goes to the far side of the court from his coach. And uh, the Frenchman serve, that is the second service game in a row. The Frenchman has uh, uh, um, gone straight through 40 love and uh, leaving the Brazilian uh, no space to put pressure on him. Uh, good serves, um, good service actions from both these guys. But the Brazilian looks somehow, um, somehow looks a class above. I don't know why. Yeah, good return. Good work. The return from the Frenchman came back at the Brazilian at, uh, at pace. That he uh, took, took it off his uh, shoes and sent it out wide to the forecourt uh, forehand of, uh, of the Brazilian. So on the run, he's managed to whip around a cross-court shot. And the Frenchman was well placed to cover it, but it was just too good. And uh, although he got a racket on it, um, he wasn't able to clear the net. Well, can I ask? Yeah, good serve. If there's one thing about this match, these two guys, uh, very good service actions. 
very clean serves. And uh, I'll tell you what, if this Brazilian can um, just take his serve up to a, um, to another level and uh, and cut out the unforced errors and get his first serves in, look out. He's gone down the tee there on the backhand side of the Frenchman in the, the forehand court, but uh, just wide. He's up 30, love. Developing into a good rally. The Frenchman goes to the net and he's passed on his backhand side. The Frenchman passed on his backhand side. He's not afraid to go to the net. And uh, he was all caught up. Uh, the ball was really close to him on his backhand side, uh, the Brazilian. And then the return came back. A nice low double-handed backhand across court, leaving the Frenchman basically uh, asking for a glass of water. Yeah, good win. 40 love. That game wins the game and wins the game going to the change of ends. The Brazilian is leading five games to four and uh, leading one set to love. So, um, I don't know, at this, um, at this stage, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past the Frenchman to have another comfortable service game. Uh, the coverage is just showing the service action of the Brazilian. Really clean, really free-flowing. And uh, in this particular point where he won, the, won this particular game in the second set, a nice forehand um, across court to the backhand of the Frenchman uh, gave him no chance of... Uh, he, was, he wasn't even in the same postcode, to be honest. Also, to be quite honest, around about that ranking, the prize money is pretty good. You can make a very fine living. So uh, let us know in the comments. It doesn't have to be today. Uh, if you're coming back later on for the replay of this, uh, this episode, let us know in the broadcast, uh, in the comments, uh, what you think of uh, this broadcast coverage, this radio-style coverage. Uh, we're covering uh, the audio from the broadcast coverage, combining that with um, uh, our own commentary, uh, our own insights on how we see these matches going. And uh, now the Frenchman, the, main draw. Uh, the Frenchman's stepping up, and he's got to, uh, he's just got to, he's got no choice. Has to, has can't afford to let his uh, game be broken here on serve. But uh, given that he's gone straight through 40 love in the last two service games, uh, I can't see any reason why he can't take this to um, a tie break, to be honest. Or maybe he might even surge past to win the next three games and win the second set 7-5. So let's see how he goes. Um, because he's got a fairly decent game on him, this uh, this Frenchman. He's, he lines up uh, for the second serve of the first point to the backhand. The Brazilian is in all sorts here, tied up in knots. He's managed to salvage it, but just is so often the case. I tell you what, it's so often the case uh, when you see someone uh, struggling, his feet his feet just weren't in the right position. He was down on his haunches with the first return, down on his into leaning in. <coughs> He was leaning into uh, that forehand shot, uh, but he was out of position and just couldn't clear the net. Uh, and uh, the Frenchman now at 15 love. Uh, second serve of this. Uh, this is the 10th game of the second set. So the Frenchman on his second serve. He's up 15 love. That's a nice serve to the forehand, but um, a very rudimentary a very rudimentary uh, plain old forehand return from the Brazilian. No, under no pressure whatsoever, the Frenchman on uh, on that shot, and he's uh, clubbed that into the net uh, well below the tape, so he'll be disappointed with that. Um, and uh, goes into this next uh, point, 15 all, as the Frenchman serves, and he has gone to the forehand again, the Brazilian, but this time, the Brazilian has said, thank you very much, that's my sweet spot. Pierre, and he has he has absolutely creamed that down the line uh, on the the backhand side of the Frenchman. <coughs> it's a nice return, and that is a clean as clean a winner as you can hope to get. Returning that was a fairly decent serve that one. He's not afraid to go to the forehand, the Frenchman, but on that occasion it was a sweet spot. And uh, even though that's gone into the net, you can see the Frenchman going for the backhand. On the uh, on the on the on the uh, the back hand side of the Brazilian, the right-handed Brazilian. He's, this time he goes to the forehand, and that's a bit of a surprise. Uh, well, his string's broken. <laughs> he's broken a. He's broken. Did he break a string? What happened there? 
something's come out of his racket. He hasn't broken the string, the Brazilian. But uh, that was a fairly, I don't know, fairly a decent second serve without being, you know, too too amazing. And uh, the Brazilians put it out of play. Serving at 30 all to the forehand again. And that is almost, I'll tell you what, that is, that is, that is almost a carbon copy of the previous point where he creamed that winner down the line and it's gone into his sweet spot and he wasn't really stretching for it, the Brazilian, but he's put it long and just only long. 40-30 to the Frenchman. Good serve. Oh, my goodness. Dear, oh, dear. Now, uh, the Brazilian uh, sent that back on his forehand and popped it up high and uh, we've seen previously that the Frenchman has had no problem dealing with those uh, balls coming overhead height, but it went to his backhand over his head and he's, uh, the angle on his racket uh, did him in there. He's uh, put it into the net off a of volley. For, uh, that's Juice serving at Juice, the Frenchman, and uh, he's again gone wide to the forehand of the Brazilian and that was uh, just wide of the line. And uh, the Brazilian will like his chances here, coming back to Juice that the Frenchman has to stay in this game. Serves short, clubbed back. The Frenchman at the net, another couple of approaches, and he's done all right, the Frenchman there. Nice work. All over the net. I'll tell you what, can anyone tell me, can anyone tell me the name of any previous French player who, who tries to dominate the net on grass? <laughs> that is incredible. He must play a lot of doubles, this guy. He is so close to the net. He is about an arm. He is about an arm and a half length uh, to the net, and he is all over it. Serving advantage, the Frenchman, and he's put it into the net again. Dear, oh dear. I tell you what, that is a big let off for the Brazilian to come back to Juice. Because the Frenchman is serving fairly decently, and as is often the case at this level, uh, these guys are elite tennis players. Um, don't don't let the fact uh, fool you that these guys um, aren't up to speed at the professional level. But it's such fine margins. I can only say it so many times. Uh, we're back to juice. Such fine margins. When your chance comes, you've got to take it. And the Frenchman did it, and he's gone out. Would you believe? The Frenchman, the Frenchman has gone out to the forehand side again. Now we know the Brazilian has a really sweet forehand when it's in in his uh, hitting hitting zone, and it's gone to that hitting zone and he's put the return into the net. The Frenchman now uh, up um, to advantage on serve, puts his first serve to try and win this game to stay in the match. Uh, he's put that into the net on his first serve, and uh, here he goes, winds up. Serving to uh, the backhand court and the Brazilian. Uh, that is a let. out wide. That is a let. And he's, he's uh, no, that was a fault. Was rewarded. Changed the pace. Oh dear. The Brazilian now back to juice, and uh, he's he's probably a bit frustrated. The Brazilian that his body language says to me. He's go down the middle out wide. These are all running through. Both the Brazilian's body language looks like he knows he should have wrapped this match up already. And that yes. return, uh, oh, he's had to leap the signs there at the side of the court, the Brazilian. The, the Frenchman um, sent him running to all, all ends of the court. A wide serve to his forehand. Didn't put the, the, didn't put the Frenchman under any pressure at all. The Frenchman has put away a forehand uh, volley. Uh, to the service line of the backhand side of the court and the Brazilian has made up good ground but he was unable to lay a racket on it and uh, had to leap the signage that uh, surrounds courts these days. And uh, although he cleared the hurdle, the Brazilian, I mean, wouldn't that be a, an annoying thing to do your ankle, roll your ankle because you didn't um, judge the height of the board, uh, the signage board there very well? So the Frenchman serves. We've got another rally from the back of the court by both players. A backhand, a backhand rally. Now a forehand by the Frenchman. Uh, again a forehand. Back the backhand to the backhand of the Brazilian. And uh, the Brazilian 
Yeah, I've got to be honest, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be negative, but I just have noticed that on a few shots, uh, as the Brazilian tries to make ground, he seems to get caught up in his own feet somehow. Uh, and this is the opposite. He's lost his footing, going to his backhand side, and he's uh, not been able to keep keep his balance. And he's ended up doing the splits um, and uh, got got racket on ball. And um, but uh, it's gone out of course. So that's not a negative comment. That's just an ob observation that this Brazilian um, may be finding his way around the grass. The ball's coming on him a bit quicker than he's used to. And uh, we're now at time after time. We are now at five all in the second set. The Brazilian uh, serving uh, to. Uh, try and get an advantage again in this second set at five ball. He's gone for an ace and that was a good a good decision by the Brazilian. Uh, went down the tee to the forehand side of the Frenchman, unable to uh, control that shot and it's gone out. Then now it's now 15 love on the serve of the Brazilian Thiago Saboth Vilda. Nice work. Good serve down the backhand side of uh, the Frenchman. Uh, down the tee, uh, down his backhand, could not, uh, didn't even raise his racket, and he's having a word to the umpire. He's down 15:30 on the Brazilian serve, and it looks like uh, there's going to be no uh, dispute at that point, which was an ace. The serve out to the backhand side of the Frenchman again, and yeah, in a fine spirit. Although. Although he got his racket on it, uh, the angle of the racket sent it up pretty high to the to the back of the court and went out nearly on the line. The Brazilian now serving at 40-15. Second serve, 40-15. Five all in the second set. And he's double faulted. <laughs> what an anti-climax. That's about the first double fault from the Brazilian. Uh, maybe, maybe... Maybe going for a bit of extra pace and knowing that uh, this isn't his best surface, uh, but his serve to the forehand, <coughs> to the backhand side, I beg your pardon. Yeah, so change of ends and uh, the Brazilian leading 6 5. He won the first set uh, 7 5. So there's not much separating these guys except for a couple of hundred rankings points, but don't don't let the rankings points can sometimes be a bit deceptive because rankings points are, they, they they can't describe um, a player's mentality or whether they're coming back from injury or um, you know it can't disguise uh, you know attitude or approach or a will to win rankings points. So the Frenchman uh, ranked at uh, 425 in the world. And the Brazilian ranked at 131. Uh, the Frenchman having another banana <laughs> again. And uh, there's a fair few uh, um, of his, his compatriots in the crowd cheering him on. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this, uh, this match plays out. But for me, uh, the Brazilian seems to be uh, doing the business. Uh, and it's pretty impressive um, uh, from the Brazilian uh, grass not being uh, his uh, natural environment. Uh, being a clay court player, uh, he won a title. Uh, the uh, the Brazilian won a title in um, uh, I can't remember which country it was, uh, whether it was Argentina or Brazil. He won a title um, in uh, the lead up to Roland Garros. So he's going well, the Brazilian this year. He'll be looking to break the serve of the Frenchman to win this match, the second round match in qualifying of the gentlemen's uh, singles draw. This qualifying round which was played on Wednesday, the 28th of June, 2023, on the stadium court, court 11 at uh, Wimbledon. Second serve. Oh, a feather backhand. And not only, that feather, that feather backhand from the Frenchman, the drop shot from the back of the court has uh, caught the Brazilian by surprise to the point where Let's, what do you so so the Brazilian saw the drop shot pretty early, and he started motoring towards uh, towards the net, but he's uh, lost his footing yet again, 
I don't know what's going on with his footwear, but he's lost his lost his footing to the point where he stumbled about four times and, and then just fell over. Good serve. Yeah, good serve by the Frenchman. Serving very well, the Frenchman. Uh, he served out to the backhand side of the Brazilian. Very strong on the first serve. Caught caught the edge of the back court service line. The Brazilian couldn't control the direction or the height. And the Frenchman, we know now, uh, we, we're well familiar watching him. He's very, very happy at the net. Goes in again. Goes in again. My goodness. The Frenchman goes in again. And uh, he was positioned badly for that uh, point that as he uh, completed his shot, he was far too uh, far too um, much on the left-hand side, the backhand side of the court, and the wide open, the Brazilian unable to take advantage of uh, the poor position of the Frenchman. And uh, the, the Frenchman now up 40 love yet again on his serve. Second serve, just long. Just long. That one, just long. So uh, the Frenchman hoping to uh, get this, uh, wrap up this game 40 15 to take it to six all and a tie break. And uh, a tie break will go down to the wire, I would think, if, this, if he uh, continues uh, through to win this point. I can't see the Brazilian breaking his serve, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, and that's he's gone for the he's gone for the ace down the tee, and caught the net as you heard. And uh, the Brazilian, I think uh, I think the Brazilian would prefer to break serve here, and win the match seven five. But I don't think he's going to. So the forehand, backhand uh, volley at the net from the Frenchman, and we're going to a tiebreaker. Well, Aber is somebody who's played an awful lot of tie breaks through his career as well. We got the doubles, third set breaker, so he's used to the crucial points. He came through a 13-11 tie break in the first round. He will back himself on the tight moments. Speaking of tight, I think he's got an internal adductor problem, and I think that he's just got the umpire to uh, to call for a trainer at the end of the breaker, one way or the other. Not sure. Just internal adductor air bear. Keep an eye on that. Nothing too much to, to worry about, hopefully. Of course, I'm not a doctor. I might be wrong. And the Brazilian serving out to the, uh, out to the forehand of the Frenchman. And that's the first uh, point of the tie break won by the Brazilian. And they'll swap ends now. Uh, swapping ends and uh, the Frenchman will take up... Uh, no, that's just uh, it's, it's not, geez. showing my ignorance here. They haven't swapped ends. Uh, it's just the Frenchman serving now after the first point. He's got he's got the next two serves, and uh, you might have heard the commentators. They think they've noticed an adductor injury to the uh, Frenchman, which uh, kind of surprises me because it's been the Brazilian slipping around all over the place, and uh, the Frenchman wins that point one all so in the tiebreak. It always is, but in a tie break, just got so much less room. Sabrefield just catches one second serve return well. That could be it. Frenchman serves, goes for the ace, uh, close to the tee, but no cigar. That's just slightly long, that first serve. Second serve, uh, third point of the tie break, one all, six all in the second set. Nice work by the Brazilian, and he's all over the net again. On the second serve, the Frenchman is showing an affinity for grass court tennis. Serve volley, serve volley. Uh, not afraid to go in at all. And uh, I've never seen this from a French player before. Never seen it before. He is trying to dominate uh, the return of serve. Uh, by the Brazilian, so he's now up 2-1 in the tie break at 6-all, and he's one love down in the match, the Frenchman. The Brazilian goes for the forehand, goes another forehand to his back, the Frenchman's backhand, that's gone long. Got the job done. Yeah, I agree, the first serve was key there. Uh, we're now 2-all in the tie break. Uh, in the second set, Cannot separate these two so far as the Brazilian prepares for his second serve. 
in this uh, in this phase that's gone wide to the forehand side of the Frenchman in the forehand court. And the Brazilian uh, lines up again. I think he's going to go for an ace here. And he does. No, it's a softer serve to the backhand. It keeps the Frenchman on his backhand. Swings him around the Frenchman now on the forehand to the forehand side. The Brazilian goes for the winner. Goes for the winner again. Nice work. Absolutely amazing. Nice work. Good game strategy by the Brazilian there. Kept the Frenchman running around. Uh, sent him from side to side. All the while, the Brazilian was playing on his own forehand. And uh, the winning shot came off the forehand side of the court to the Frenchman's backhand uh, and to the service line for a service line, a clear winner. And the Brazilian Saboth Vilda is now leading 3-2 and receiving serve from the Frenchman in the second set tiebreak. Now he's thinking, give me one of these next two points. Let me get ahead. Very even this match. Very even. First serve into the net. And again, if you're just joining us, this is a uh, wrap-up of day three qualifying for the men's singles draw, the qualifying. A nice drop shot off the backhand. Oh, boy. I tell you what. What a shot to go for in a tie break. <laughs> and you're trying to qualify for the main draw at Wimbledon. So the, the Brazilian, the Brazilian was on his uh, backhand court side and he played... From the back of the court, he's tried for a drop. He's tried for a drop shot from just inside the baseline of his backhand court. <laughs> what is he doing? But you got to, you got to, now whether or not it was the right thing to do or not, you got to applaud. You got to applaud the bravery. This is the type of tennis you like to see. I mean, it wasn't that far wide either. It did make it over the net, and it was just the spin of the ball. <laughs> under the humidity of the clouds above that sent it outside the line. Good shot. <laughs> That's what we like to see. The Brazilian serving at three all in the... T uh, the Brazilian receiving, I beg your pardon, at three all. They've swapped ends. Three all in the tie break. You couldn't get any tighter uh, this contest. The Frenchman serving, second serve. That is long. If you call that... That is long. That's a double fault. I tell you what, the Brazilian, the Brazilian gave away the point with that, <laughs> that excruciatingly close drop shot. Uh, but that is uh, the Brazilian is now up uh, four three in the tie break. I think that was classed as an ace. That last point <laughs> didn't look like an ace. Or maybe it was a double fault. That's right. Yeah, it was a, d <laughs> it's a double fault. There's a lot of uh, confusion here because of the commentary is conflicting with what I saw. Not my commentary, by the way. And that is that is a crucial service point win that uh, the Brazilian has gone two points ahead in this tiebreak for the first time in this second set. The Brazilian leading 5-3 and he's on serve. So the Frenchman, let's see what he's made of because he's got to win this point. He's gone for the ace. Great, great tennis. The Brazilian has uh, given himself three match points. The Frenchman would have been looking to uh, win that point off the serve of the Brazilian or at least force an error. And the Brazilian, not for the first time, has gone for the ace and it went down to, um, it went the backhand it went the backhand uh, side of the forecourt for the Frenchman and it just sailed past him like an express train <laughs> catching a commuter by surprise. The Brazilian uh, now looking to win the match off, the, off this next serve of the Frenchman at 6-3. Three, three match points. The Frenchman, oh boy, the, Bra the Frenchman has gone for the ace there. Down the tee. <laughs> That's brave. He's gone uh, down the forehand side. Brazilian steps in. Nice work. Serve, that is, yes, I agree. That is a gutsy second serve that uh, the Frenchman might have caught 
Yeah. Out of the corner of his eyes, he swung into his service motion. He might have seen the Brazilian stepping forward before the ball was uh, touching the Frenchman's racket. And it came at pace. That second serve was pretty pacey. And uh, the Brazilian couldn't uh, get over the top of it. Could not get over the top of that second serve. Nice work by the Frenchman. And now he finds himself on a second serve again. He's down two match points at 6-4. The Brazilian looking to wrap this up. Oh dear. Oh, that's too bad. A couple of double points towards the end from Pierre de Herbert. Straight sets in the end, 7-5, seven, 7-6. Seven, a match played in a very fine spirit. Good to see Herbert back after injury a year ago. Sablesfield continues his newfound fine grass court form. A second victory. He's into the final qualifying round. And that momentum from the French Open where he beat Daniel Medvedev, having qualified, then beat Guido Pella. He's, uh, he's a player. 13 aces helped his cause today. And just the, the forehand, just, just like yours, Naomi. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break here. That is the end of that match. The Frenchman unable to get over the line. We'll just make a note of the timestamp because we're going to come back. There's an interview on court. Um, 5.36. <laughs> Let's make a note of that. Timestamp 5.36. We're going to come back to listen to that on-court interview uh, by the Frenchman. Um, 5.36. Come on. 5.36. 5.36. Because we want to come back. We're going to get, uh, take a quick break. Um, don't go anywhere. Uh, we will be right back after this short break. Uh, grab yourself a Coke or a cup of tea or a beer or whatever, and uh, we'll continue this coverage um, by wrapping up um, the stats for this particular match. G'day, welcome back to this Australian Open Life. We tell stories and our story is the qualifying day three of uh, the men's singles draw. And let's have a listen to the winner uh, of this second round match between Pierre Hubert and uh, Thiago Saboth Vilda, uh, the Brazilian coming out on top, 7-5, um, 7-6. Seven, seven, and uh, let's have a listen to the on-court interview. Massive. What a ground! It what, was. A, what ground strokes this uh, this fella has! Very nice of uh, Herbert to give his uh, wristband away. Disappointment for him, but uh, Sabath Wield is an impressive specimen, is he not? I thought he was excellent. What a great performance! And you know what? There's more in there. He had levels to tap into if he needed to, but he did just about enough to keep that to a straight sets victory. I think that's why we saw him getting a little irritated because he felt there was more. But it was great. Straight sets in the end, comfortable, 7-5, seven, 7-6. Seven, Let's find out some more about him. We've gone in, Vidal. Chavo, that, that was a really good match for everybody to watch. How was it for you playing in it? I mean, I felt pretty good on court. I honestly didn't expect playing this well on grass. I had basically no preparations. I, uh, I mean, I practiced for a week only. But, I mean, I could, I could manage to play pretty well on Tuesday, today. Monday actually, and today, so now I'm just really happy with the result. How much did that win over Medvedev in Paris, and then what happened afterwards? How much has that given you a real sense of self-belief? I mean, I've, I've had a pretty good year so far. Um, I've been gaining a lot of confidence throughout the last couple of months. Um, I mean, that was just unreal. I mean, I felt really good on the court. I think that was the best match of my life, but I just need to keep working, keep my head up and looking forward. 
you had such a terrible year last year, didn't you? And now, this year, it's like, it's like everything's going the right way. Can you pinpoint what's happened? That's actually pretty harsh, but um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. Um, I mean, I had a couple of injuries last year and, and, and the year before, but I mean, tennis is about this. It's about momentum, and I mean, I'm just doing my best right now. Can you, can you think about next week, or have you got to focus on tomorrow? No, it's about match by match. you gotta, you got to focus day by day. And I mean, it, I just got to focus on the next match. I don't know who I'm playing, but I'm just happy to be in the final. Well, that was a great performance today. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Just okay, so uh, we'll just let the uh, the broadcast coverage run in the background because uh, what we're going to do here uh, over the top of the commentary. So let us know in the comments if you find uh, the volume uh, uh, conflicts too much. But uh, we just want to let that um, run in the background um, uh, just to keep it interesting. So let's have a look at the stats of this match um, between uh, Herbert and Saboth Vilda, uh, the Brazilian who is actually seated... Uh, 21. He's the 21st seed in the qualifying draw. Uh, that match ran for uh, an hour, nearly 40 minutes. Uh, the Brazilian winning 7-5, 7-6, uh, uh, seven points to four in the second set tie break. Uh, played at the stadium court, uh, court 11 uh, at Wimbledon. And uh, we'll just look at the match stats. Uh, we won't bother looking at uh, the, the, the each set. So the match stats, uh, let's see what we can find out about uh, how uh, Saboth Vilda um, came out on top. And he's he's on top in most of the stats here. And uh, the only stat that he didn't come out on top in was the net points won. Uh, the Frenchman winning 61% of the net points that he contested. And no surprise there. I just cannot believe a Frenchman uh, running in uh, serve volley, serve volley, and just and doing it so well. Like he's um, he's got a real nice uh, uh, flexible wrist action um, about him when he plays those volleys at the net. He's got quick hands, so maybe he's a bit of a doubles specialist as well. But let's go straight to our favourite um, uh, uh, stat, uh, which really points towards uh, how this guy uh, went about his business. The break points one. Uh, uh, pretty low actually. Um, he only won 33% of the break points contested, uh, the Brazilian, at 33%. But more importantly, he actually managed to uh, outdo the Frenchman by winning 29%. Uh, of his receiving points, so they played um, they played um, 75 points in all over the match, uh, and um, uh, the receiving points out of each of them, 29%. The Brazilian one. Uh, now he also, we'll just go back to the first serves. Uh, he won 65%. Uh, 65% he, of his first serves went in. That's a pretty good percentage at this level, and uh, more importantly, 82%. Of his first serve points that went in, he won them. So that's probably the two telling stats. The first serve points won, and uh, also the break points won. Uh, so we'll leave it there uh, with uh, with uh, um, uh, Herbert and Saboth Vilda. And uh, we'll just take the commentary uh, forward a bit. Um, in the background um, that uh, we'll just uh, let this uh, coverage run down. There's a couple of interviews there. Uh, we'll just let the, uh, the commentary, uh, we'll actually we'll go uh, into um, uh, one, of the, one of the women's matches on day three or play in the background. You'll hear some commentary. Um, but what I want to do is go through uh, the results for, um, I want to go through the results. Actually, what I'll do is I'll get rid of the commentary because I don't want too much noise in the background uh, competing with your intention. So let's go back uh, to the sights, sounds, summer of tennis uh, to keep you visually engaged uh, here. And uh, we'll just let some uh, sights, sounds of summer uh, run here. Uh, one second. <laughs> so I've just got to sort out my screens with the defaults uh, as this... Um, uh, as this uh, software really does its own thing, but let's take a look um, at the uh, at the stadium at Melbourne Park. This will make a nice background for us uh, as uh, the sight sounds summer of tennis in Melbourne. While we go through the results uh, for uh, day three, uh, gentlemen's qualifying singles uh, played on the 28th of June. Most of these chaps were playing uh, their second round match. 
Uh, they've got to play three qualifying matches uh, to get through the main draw. Uh, so let's see if we can spot any familiar names uh, popping out at us. Uh, well, we uh, can see straight away Mark Polmans has won his uh, second round match. He's unseated. Uh, it took him two hours to get over the Americans. Zvadsta, uh, Polmans uh, won 4-6, 6-3, 6-3. Six, six, nice work by Mark Polmans, the Australian. We've featured him uh, previously uh, as a wild card at the Australian Open. Uh, so we know he's going pretty well. Uh, nice work for the Australian. Let's see if we can see anyone else uh, trying to come through qualifying who shouldn't be there. And I'll tell you who's, who's not there is the seventh seed in the qualifying singles on the men's draw, losing in the second round. And we actually watched his uh, first round match the other day. James Duckworth, the seventh seed, he's gone down 4-6, four, 4-6 six, four, six to the Frenchman Mayo uh, or Mayotte. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible news. And uh, let's see if there's anyone else just going through the scorecard. And uh, Taro Daniel, the Japanese player, seated uh, fourth in the qualifying singles. He'd had a, he's had a nice win in his second round match, uh, qualifying match in 90 minutes against the Italian Nardi. He's won 6-3, 6-3. And court 10, the final match on court 10 of the day. And it's the Australian Grand Slam champion of 2023, Rinky Hijikata, playing singles. And he's seated ninth. And he's gone down. I can't believe this. It'll make you... <laughs> Just make your eyes water this result. He's gone down against uh, Barros, uh, Barrios Vera. Can you believe this? 6-7, six, 6-7. Seven, six, seven. The first set, he's lost uh, seven points to three, and he couldn't back it up in the second. Um, I can't believe this. <laughs> he's lost the second set tiebreaker, seven points to two. So just uh, a few points they're uh, preventing Rinky Hijikata from contesting a third round match to get into the main draw of qualifying from qualifying at Wimbledon. Uh, anyone else there? There's a familiar name, Rodionov. Uh, in, he's uh, lost his uh, second round match, the 11th seed of the qualifying singles. Uh, Dennis Novak got through against uh, Broom. Uh, the, uh, the British player, uh, Novak, winning 6-3, 6-4. Nice work by him from the Netherlands. Uh, the Frenchman, uh, Puey, uh, he has got through in three uh, tight games. Well, the first uh, set was very tight. He lost at 6-4, the tiebreaker. And then he's come through and won 6-3, 6-3. Good work for him. Um, a couple of Italians battling it out. Um, on court 15, Analdi uh, winning 7-6, uh, 6-4 six, six, against his compatriot, Gayo. And uh, we've got another British player winning his second round match. The Poms will be happy about that. Harris getting through against the Frenchman. Gaston, the 25th seed in the qualifying singles. And uh, the fans will be happy about that. I can hear the fans going off. Uh, Harris uh, losing the first set, 2-6, and then came through in a tiebreaker. 7-6, winning 7 points to 5. Nice work. And uh, winning 6-4 in the third set. And uh, that's about it as far as those go. So there you go. That is the men's qualifying singles. We'll just turn those fans down a bit. <laughs> Our story is tennis. That's exactly right. So uh, we'll wrap it up there because uh, we've been going uh, a fair while now. Um, we've been going a fair while Um uh, through these uh, qualifying rounds. Uh, we'll just get back to the top of the uh, playlist here. And uh, you can see the Melbourne skyline. This is a nice way to finish uh, our coverage. Uh, that uh, We will wrap it up here because we've been going um, a fair old while, which uh, we're heading into our nearly our second hour. It's, uh, we've been going an hour and a half. That's enough that you've been listening to my voice. So, uh, again... Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll wrap up day three of qualifying and we're going to come back uh, in about an hour and a half or two hours to wrap up qualifying. Day four of qualifying at Wimbledon to see who has got through the three rounds of qualifying into the main draw at Wimbledon, which starts tomorrow night, Australian time. And, uh, uh, oh dear, I haven't, uh, I haven't done, have I done this right? Uh, I haven't done this. I apologise. I've uh, I've not done this correctly. So let me do it correctly because this is the standard we want to keep hitting for you um, at this Australian Open life. Um, and that's not good at all. Why is that doing that? Um, 
no, that's the wrong one. That's not what we want to do. We want to do this one, the sights, the sounds, the summer of tennis. Uh, and I apologise for dragging this on a bit. But, oh, no, that is uh, that is correct. That should be correct. No, it's not. Now we're there. There we go. That's what I was looking for because we want to finish off this uh, stream very strongly. Uh, this presentation, um, it should be going uh, the way that I want it very, very soon. Uh, if it's not there already, and if it's not, I apologize. So uh, I'll stop babbling on. Uh, because we're basically uh, now into the final minutes of this stream. So uh, the story is um, that uh, this has been this Australian Open Life. You've been listening to me, the bloke who walks, um, that uh, uh, we are bringing you uh, coverage, uh, uh, reactive, uh, dynamic coverage of Wimbledon 2023. And uh, if you're a fan of tennis and you want something different, um, that's what we're trying to bring you by uh, looking into, uh, digging a little deeper into uh, the stories behind uh, the main draw, the qualifying players, the wild cards, and uh, we want to bring you as much uh, dynamic coverage as we can. We've also got a podcast uh, which is uh, uh, hosted on the Acast platform, and we encourage you to uh, be a patron of that if you can drop a like. Uh, drop a subscription and we'll finish off here in the last minute of this broadcast um, uh, as we head into uh, the final seconds of this uh, stream. Uh, so uh, we, we will uh, be back again later this afternoon with day four, the ladies qualifying singles. Uh, and thanks for listening. Thanks for watching and bye for now.